Hello everybody, this is Captain Jack, and I am back with tutorial number three from my Volts tutorial series, and this one is going to be about the assembly line mod. This is one of the mods that it's included in the Volts mod pack, and uh, this one actually has less items than the previous mod, which we did, which was Universal Electricity. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. Uh, that's Universal Electricity Volts tutorial part two. Part one is getting started and steel. Uh, we're just going to go through the items that are in this mod. It's a pretty cool mod. Fairly versatile. There's uh, some problems that, that I don't like about it and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but we're going to go through these one by one. Uh, the first item is a conveyor belt which is the kind of the bread and butter of this mod if you will. Next is the manipulator and then we're going to take a look at the imprinter, the imprint, uh, the rejector, and the detector and for each of these two things you're going to need an imprint. Next we're going to take a look at the encoder and the disk that you put in the encoder to program the armbot and then we'll just take a quick look at the crate which is a pretty cool little tool. Now I put together a redstone repeater just something simple. I did want to slip my wrist when I figured out uh, red power wasn't included in volts but in any case uh, that's subject for another day. Here we are, you'll recognize the factory from the first episode, or the second episode of this that I did. Um, I've added some things to it, obviously, as you can see here, and we'll go through how I've uh, put this all together here. So these are conveyor belts, and this is them in action. You can tell by the yellow arrow which way the conveyor belt is running. Yes, you can ride the conveyor belts, if that's something that you feel that you need to do just to maybe get it out of your system. Um, you can move the conveyor belts around and for this you're going to need a wrench. Now if I just right click on the conveyor belt it's going to rotate it around in a counterclockwise, clockwise, <laughs> counterclockwise fashion and you'll notice the arrow changes each way. Um, this will do you absolutely no good. It'll just keep bouncing back and forth create an annoying infinite loop so make sure all your conveyor belts are pointed in the direction that you want them to be pointed in. Now if I shift click this with the wrench you'll notice that well, we've created a little jump for ourselves here and that's how I've created uh, these ramps over here by shift clicking that'll drop it in the air just like that uh, put it down so there you go that's how you move the conveyor belts shift clicking or regular right clicking. This is the manipulator important to note here that the manipulator uh, needs power which is there's a wire underneath there I have it running um, all throughout here I'm fairly sure that uh, the power fed to a manipulator can power these conveyor belts up to uh, just a guess is 10 or 15 blocks somebody's gonna have to clear that up for me but this is the manipulator and what this does is it takes items from or puts items into a target um, target chest which doesn't necessarily actually have to be a chest it could be something else like a furnace um, or possibly even an imprinter and we'll get into that in a second um, what's also important to note about this manipulator is that the arrow on the actual manipulator machine is facing out because I do want it to take items out of this chest and push them along the conveyor belt and in order to change this you can right click and you'll see that the arrow changes just like that there we go so it's the right way um, another important thing to note about the manipulator is that yes it does need a redstone signal I have that repeater outside because that is the ideal thing to use in a situation like this if you want to keep this automated and just dump stuff in there and not have to press the button 42 times um, or however many times you need to press it uh, it's good to have a repeating system like that and again I really hate that red power is not in here because I love red power uh, but in any case, if I press that button, it's going to eject each one of these items one by one and send them on their merry way down my conveyor belt system. Let's go over this while we're here. This cannot be changed. Oh, yes, it can. This can be changed by using a, um, a wrench. You can change the orientation of it. Uh, what this is is a detector, and the detector very simply detects the blocks that are in front of it. And right now I have this detector set to detect copper ore. And you can set it to detect whatever you want, multiple items, one item, any, anything you want. 
with an imprint, and we'll see how to make that in a minute. But what the detector does is if a copper ore floats down this little conveyor belt and gets in front of this block right here, it's going to emit a redstone signal, and that will light up these little redstone dusts here. Now, from what I've tried, it does not light up or it does not activate a rejector, which is unfortunate, um, but that's what this thing does. It sends a redstone signal to wherever you want it to go. So if I press this button, out pops one of those things. And if I press it again, we're going to see a copper come out. And we're going to see this detector detect it just like that. There we go. Lights up the redstone for a few seconds. And that's what that does. So, so far, we got a manipulator, a conveyor belt, and a detector. Now what's next? Our rejectors. These things, um, something born out of the dark ages as far as I'm, I'm concerned here. <laughs> but they're... They're kind of neat. Uh, what they do is uh, you have to give them an imprint, and I have this one imprinted with the copper ore, just like the detector is. And when the item that it's imprinted with floats in front of the conveyor belt, or floats in front of it, this little wooden thing is going to shoot out and shove the block up this ramp here. And likewise, this one is going to take tin, and it's going to detect it just like this, except when it detects it, it's gonna, going to jam it. If I can figure out how to fly here, it's going to jam it up that ramp. So we'll see that happen. If I press each one of these, or if I press this one again, there we go. There we go. You see how those shoot it? And this is the absolutely ridiculous part of this mod. These things just bounce rather <laughs> animatedly, if that's a word up those conveyor belts. I It only happens when the stuff's going up. Maybe that's something that is going to be fixed in the future, but right now it looks completely ludicrous. Everything bouncing everywhere. Um, when you're doing this, it's important to note that when you pop stuff out, if you want to pick it up, you can't. It's stuck on this conveyor belt, which is probably a good thing that you can't grab that kind of thing or grab things accidentally when they're floating by you. So once they're on this, they're technically considered um, kind of like a red power pipe, pneumatic pipe, or a build craft pipe. So we got the manipulator, we got the conveyor belts, we got the detector, we have the rejector, and now we are going to see how to work them. Now in order to make these work, like I said, you're going to need an imprint, and imprints are fairly easy to make. There we go, redstone piece of paper and an ink, ink sack. And you want this machine called the imprinter, which does not need power. Uh, just so there's no confusion, that pipe is not connected to that. These don't need power. They're standalone machines. This and the encoder don't need to get any power from anywhere. Um, so what you need to do is you need to take an imprint. You need to put it in this slot right here. And then select whatever you want to imprint. Hold on. Set that backwards. Put it in this slot. If I could tell you what the right thing to do is then whatever you want imprinted onto this piece of paper will get put into here. So you see the imprint says copper ore and just click, take that out and the imprint's moved. If you want to remove the imprint, just simply place it right back in the other block and it will negate the effect and cancel it out. Now, in order to imprint these machines, all you need to do is select the imprint and right click. Now, if I right click with this machine and it already has an imprint in it, you see it pops right out into my hand. And you'll also notice that when you mouse over or uh, put your cursor on this machine, it will light up and say what's imprinted. And since I took the imprint out, nothing appears there. So this one and this one, you see, they light up. Bing bong, bing bong. That's so exciting. So there we go. We've imprinted it with copper ore. Now, another thing to note about these imprints is that you can do multiple imprints. So if you put copper, copper ore in here and then you add tin ore, you have copper and tin. And then if you want uninsulated wire, you can just you can just go hog wild with these things. And if I pop this one out, put this one in, you get this ridiculous text when you mouse over these things. But it just tells you whatever basically you've set it to do. And the limit of what you can do is up to your imagination. Alrighty then. Um, so same thing with the with these rejectors here, you can place an imprint inside of them and they will unceremoniously ram anything that comes across their path up and out and wherever you want it to go. So that's them there. 
Fairly simple so far. Fairly simple so far. All right. I've got a little bit of an auto smelting system going on over here. And you'll see I have, if you can see, I have four manipulators. There's two here and two there. And I have powered furnaces or electric furnaces. And what happens is that the ore comes down the conveyor belt. It gets shoved up and it goes into furnaces. Now you'll note, which is extremely important to note, as in any of the mods, in basically any Minecraft mod pack I've ever played, it's extremely important to note where to input and where to output items. And the manipulators kind of look funny and it's kind of deceiving to, to see that this might work with the manipulators just sitting on top of a furnace, but it does work. You just need to bear in mind how the machine is oriented. So the manipulator's on top, and the input slot is right here. So it's going to come down and out, and it's going to come out the right side. So I have a manipulator here with the arrow pointed out the right side, and I have a manipulator here, and that's going to get dumped in the top there. And if you would like to see that, I can press my button a couple more times because that's what I like to do. And here we go, bouncing up going to come in, get smelted, come out there, and then I need to eject it. And again, like we already talked about, manipulators do need a redstone signal. And again, these would be better off put on a redstone repeater clock, but I don't have it that way. So I'm just going to press these a whole bunch of times and the stuff's going to come out, down, and it's going to go into my target chest. And so there we go. It's not exactly a fully automated system. But again, I really hate redstone dust, so I didn't do anything with it. But anyways, on this conveyor belt system, the final destination chest is right here. And everything's going to get dumped into there. And if you so desired, you can have another manipulator pulling things out, putting them in other places, and so on and so forth. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Let's do crates while we're here. These are crates. And let me get out of creative mode for this. Crates are a really cool addition. I really like these a lot. They are almost the same thing as barrels in Tech at Light in regards, or because of the fact that you can only store one type of item in them. And it will tell you how many and what they're called. And they're even so nice to give you a beautiful little graphic. And speaking of graphics, uh, Sfax Purity Craft 4 volts got updated and there's some let me see if I search for a wire here some of the wire graphics got changed pretty cool um, you notice those are different from the last time that we were in here so check out the minecrafters.com and you can find the link to download that and also a tutorial because that's just how nice we are anyways getting back to crates um, they're, they're single item storage boxes and you can store over 500 items in these boxes and the best part about them is that you can take the boxes down by right clicking a wrench and you can hold it in your hand and you can carry it around and you can put it back and you can pick up this one and you can carry it around and you will notice that I am moving much slower because this is a heavy heavy box and unfortunately even the captain can't carry over that much without getting slowed down um, also, while you're while we're here, you'll see that I have a slowness debuff, and the debuff will just depend on how many items you are carrying. So if you have an inventory loaded with 500 of everything, basically you're better off standing on a conveyor belt to get around, which is not exactly the way to go. So there's crates, um, really cool addition. You can kind of make a big automated warehouse to store all your stuff in a big stack. Um, should probably it'll be something that I'll be doing either on my own or in a video sooner or later. Um, the next, last, and not least, certainly, item is the encoder, and the encoder will help us power this really cool arm bot. Now, at first, this may seem like a rather daunting little uh, machine here because it takes a little bit of quote-unquote programming. It's not really programming at all, trust me. Um, 
But what you have to do is you have to get a disk, and that's this blue thing right here that I'm holding. And you have to put it in here, and you have to type in code, and the ARMBOT will do whatever you type in. Um, I'm trying to see. I don't want these to be the same. Here we go. They're not. We're going to use this command first. And I will show you what this command does, and then we'll make our own, just so you can see how simple it really is. And here we go. I'm going to throw this in here by right-clicking. And I've told the ARMBOT to move over here, wait for an item. When it finds an item, grab the item and throw it over here. So let's send it an item that's not a captain. If I can get over here. Okay, here we go. So there we go. It's going to come down there. The ARMBOT's going to... Oh, are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the item can't be an item that is selected by one of those stupid pushy thingies. Here we go. I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff on the conveyor belt, and conveyor belts on conveyor belts is not the best example. But you can see that the arm bot takes it, grabs it, and plops it over here. And it will go back to its original position because that is what I have programmed it to do. So let's just see that in action one more time. Oh, these are really annoying me. I'm going to throw that on there. I missed. There's one. Arm bot's going to grab it, move it over, drop it return to its original position and wait for the next item. So let me take that code out and I'll show you what it's doing. I have given the command to rotate negative 90 degrees, grab an item as it passes by. Once it grabs it, it's going to rotate back 90 degrees from where it came from. It's going to drop the item. It's going to return to its original position and then it's going to repeat infinitely. Now there's a lot of different things that you can program this to do. Um, you can tell it to repeat only a certain amount of times. You can tell it to idle for a certain amount of time. And you can even tell this thing to grab an item, throw it up in the air, and rocket it to some other corner of your base. Um, but I am going to show you another cool command that you can do. And that's this one that I have prepared for us to watch. And what I have is, oh, 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 forgot something, forgot something really important here. Let's do this real quick. Um, give me another imprint. The imprinter can also make things for you, which uh, is similar to something that you can do in Tech at Light. Maybe people don't know about it. Um, Ingram kind of discovered this, and it changed our lives. Kind of, not really. Um, so if I want to make an imprint and I want to auto craft something. I can imprint it with insulated, uninsulated copper wire. And I can take this out of here. Now to make uninsulated copper wire, it's going to take three copper ingots. So this being the inventory placeholder for the imprinter. Oh, I don't have any with me. As long as I have this thing set and see it says crafting here. That's very crafty. As long as this inventory box holds the proper amount of items to craft the imprint, it will make it. And there we go. You see this is depleting. These are increasing. And I'm getting lots of uninsulated copper wire. And that is another important use of the imprint because I'm about to show you how the ARMBOT and the imprinter can work together. This is another program that I just made. And we'll just watch this in action. And then we'll discuss it. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Get me the wires, please. There we go. It's getting lots and lots of wires. And what it's doing, or what I've told it to do, is to get, is to use the imprinter's crafting slot and pull out any items that have been crafted, as long as enough resources are available to make that. And if I deplete the resources, it's not going to get any and it's just going to keep trying and trying and trying and finally when there's enough in there there we go it's going to grab some more and if I right click I can take the imprint out and we can take a look at it really quick let's see um, in this imprint I've used the use command as opposed to the grab command and the use command will just try to use whatever is in the target where I happen to have this thing stop so the ARMBOT can obviously be used 
um, in a lot more situations than just to grab some things out of here and put it here. Um, the command to make this thing shoot stuff is fire, and you choose the velocity at which you want to fire it. If you want to toss it onto a conveyor belt that's halfway across the world, I'm not sure if that's really even possible, but it launches it pretty far. Uh, so this is Ben the assembly line mod. I hope what I have told you is helpful. Um, this is not really end game kind of stuff because you know these things are really easy to make. Just a few steel and some wood and a motor and you got yourself some of these and the rest of the stuff isn't too bad. These things aren't too bad either. And this is just a basic auto crafting little rig I've set up here. Um, little storage area I've set up in my warehouse and what I'm going to do is just keep building on this little warehouse as I go through each mod. Um, I I went a little bit hog wild with some things. I added T1 through 3 missile launchers, rail guns, cruise missile launchers, got my radar EMP tower going up here. Um, we got a little command center going soon. Um, but yeah, that's the assembly line mod. Um, hopefully I got everything right. I'm not sure if there's going to be updates for this mod in the future. I know there were some other cool things that you were supposed to be able to do with a decoder um, or a detector, my apologies, where it would detect everything except for copper and send a red zone signal. I'm not really sure how to do that. Um, maybe if somebody knows, they can let me know. Um, these doors open and close because of something incredibly awesome, which I wish they better add in every single mod pack from here until forever. This is a glass pressure plate and you can barely see it. Um, in volts that's probably for setting up landmines and traps and all sorts of explosive debauchery which is up to your imagination. Anyways I'm getting off topic here. Uh, this has been Captain Jack from the Minecrafters and with an, with an assembly line tutorial. Make sure you check us out on our website it's theminecrafters.com. There's all sorts of awesome things on there, including, like I said before, the Sfax Pure BD Craft for volts, for tech at light, for all sorts of things for your life, um, downloads and tutorials on there. And also check us out on Facebook. We are theminecrafters.com on Facebook as well. Give us a like. You can have a chance to win something there. And that's it. Captain Jack signing off and staying poised.